CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Alberta Health Services is reviewing its procedures and policies after it took emergency responders at least 11 minutes to begin treating a woman who had collapsed outside the front door of the Chinook Regional Hospital. A man who witnessed the incident has already met with hospital officials after raising concerns about what he felt was a needless and potentially life-threatening delay. Terry Vote reports. Tony Stefan describes it as one of the most frustrating moments of his life. I absolutely felt helpless because here's this lady who's having a major trauma, a heart attack. She's turning blue and I've had to approach three hospital workers to get people to come out and help and it wasn't happening. Stefan says he was arriving at the Chinook Regional Hospital last Friday when he saw the woman collapse on the sidewalk about 50 meters from the front door. He rushed inside looking for help but claims it took 15 to 16 minutes before an ambulance arrived. By then, another lady had already started to administer CPR. Yes, security did come. And according to the hospital staff, the administration, they secured the area. But that's not what it's about. It's about sending emergency workers. And the emergency room is only another 300 feet further. So I don't understand the policy. I can't wrap my mind around it why they didn't come out the second that they found out that there was an emergency right on their doorstep. You know, it's a, it's a terrifying situation. What's most important to us is delivering good patient care, doing what's best for patients. Hospital administrators say EMS is a critical part of the emergency response system. Essentially, they're the experts in pre-hospital care, including the assessing, treating and transporting of patients. At the same time, they are reviewing circumstances of this incident. Again, part of the review is, you know, take, now taking a step back and going, that's one piece. But what, you know, essentially looking at everything that we've done and really coming together and, and looking at what should we be doing differently and implementing that as, fa as quickly as we possibly can. Officials say currently there is no province-wide policy on how to treat patients outside the hospital. They're not putting a timeline on their review. But Tony Steffen thinks it should be done as quickly as possible. Terry votes CTV News, Lethbridge. Hospital officials aren't releasing any information about the woman who collapsed or her condition. They have expressed gratitude to the bystanders that intervened and initiated CPR. Let's check out that forecast, Dory Rossiter. It is going to be cold tonight in parts of Alberta. It really is. And Jackie, it's, it's not even so much the temperature will get down to, you know, minus 18 degrees, which is cold, but it's the wind chill value on top of that. We do start to climb out of this situation as we head into tomorrow. We're actually expecting some sunshine. Got a nice tidy area of high pressure developing to the northwest of us. That'll slide over us tomorrow and stay tuned for the five day forecast. Things are improving. That's what we like to hear. Improvements. Thanks, Dory. Lethbridge MP Jim Hillier is responding to a controversial YouTube video. The House of Commons vote to abolish the long gun registry. It shows Hillier celebrating the vote by pointing his fingers as if he were shooting guns. The video was uploaded Monday, which was also the anniversary of the Montreal massacre when 14 women were killed at Ecole Polytechnique. Yesterday, the Speaker of the House ruled MPs must conduct themselves appropriately and not applaud following a vote. Hillier responded to the YouTube video in the House of Commons today. Ruling, I won't be making gestures during votes from this point on of any nature. I, I respect that. I, I do think that it, it is the, that the offense occurred because someone uh, took this video uh, in an inappropriate way and they were the ones who connected it. They were the ones who connected this gesture to the victims of violence and that is deeply regrettable. Hillier says he did not intend to cause any offense to victims of violence or anyone else. He blames the person who posted the video for connecting it to the Montreal massacre. Prime Minister Stephen Harper is in Washington today. He and President Barack Obama unveiled the Beyond the Border initiative. Former Canadian diplomat and Canada-U.S. trade expert Colin Robertson says a key part of the deal includes tracking travelers. 
exit Canada, the American authorities will take that information, and it's, it's basically your passport information, where you live, your date of birth, and provide that to Canadian authorities. And uh, Canadian authorities uh, are anticipated to be doing the same for American authorities. The two countries will harmonize the regulations, making it easier for trade items to cross the border, and both countries will screen items from overseas on each other's behalf. Agriculture Minister Jerry Ritz says a federal court ruling that he breached the Canadian Wheat Board Act will not stop passage of the legislation before a Senate committee. A Winnipeg judge ruled that Ritz should have consulted with farmers before stripping the board of its monopoly to market western wheat and barley. But Ritz says the government still believes Parliament has the right to end the monopoly. We have more reaction on our news at 5.30. And Alberta's new impaired driving legislation passed third and final reading in the legislature late last night. Mr. Speaker, total for the motion, 30, total against, 7. Honourable members, accordingly, Bill 26, the Traffic Safety Amendment Act, is hereby passed through a third reading. Bill 26 includes license suspensions for anyone caught with a blood alcohol level between 0.05 and 0.08. It'll receive royal assent in the new year, but not everyone in the government supported the bill. Richard Mars is not running in the next election. He urged his fellow Tory colleagues to not support the bill. At what point will you be happy and claim success? Are we going to be doing this in three or four years again and want to go down zero? I suspect that probably will be the case. I was actually very happy that uh, Rachel Notley, uh, the uh, NDP MLA for, in Edmonton, uh, had decided to vote in favour of this bill. Uh, drinking and driving isn't a partisan uh, issue. I think we all uh, realize that uh, the rates of uh, injuries and fatalities dealing with alcohol in, on Alberta streets are simply too high. And uh, this is something I, I think that we can all rally behind regardless of our partisan affiliation. Premier Allison Redford had wanted the new laws in place by Christmas, but the Solicitor General says Albertans likely won't see any changes in the law for at least six more months. Graham James has pleaded guilty to sex assaults on two of his former players. The former WHL hockey coach entered the plea of guilty to sexual assaults on two of his former players today in court, including NHL star Theo Fleury. James was facing nine charges of sexual assault on three players, but he only pled guilty to charges involving two. The other charges have been stayed. James served almost two years in jail in the late 1990s for assaulting two young hockey players, including NHLer Sheldon Kennedy. James was pardoned three years later. A house fire in Cranbrook that sent one person to hospital is being investigated today. Crews were called to this home near the city's downtown around 8.30 Monday night. Flames were apparent and firefighters called in additional resources. They had the fire out within half an hour. A rescue team found one person in the house. They were taken to East Kootenai Regional Hospital in serious condition. The cause of the fire still unknown. Damages are pegged at around $200,000. Well, numbers are starting to drop off at the Lethbridge Emergency Shelter and Resource Centre as some of the clients turn to family during the holidays. Staff say between 70 and 80 people are still using the shelter and they expect the number to drop off as Christmas gets closer. The shelter held an open house today inviting support agencies and community residents to come in and see what programs they're offering. Elders demonstrated a traditional smudge ceremony. Shelter residents put some of their crafts and artwork on display. The public was also given tours of the facility while the city and other agencies combine to look after basic needs, staff say they also count on donated items to comfort those who spend a lot of time outdoors. Very popular items at this time of the, of the year and uh, I see that we really didn't have any this morning was um, things like toques, mittens, socks are very popular commodity uh, with a lot of wet feet out there in the snow. So just those kind of items that help keep the guests warm. Uh, another um, donation or, or something else that we uh, is, utilize well as any of the toiletries. This was the first time since they've opened in over seven years that they've held an open house at the shelter. Well, he is off. Sobey's owner, Dallas Hardy, spent just one night on the roof of his store for local food banks. Hardy went up on the roof Monday. For the past 11 years, he's committed to living and sleeping on the roof until Lethbridge residents have donated at least 2,000 food hampers. Last year, he spent three days and two nights in freezing temperatures. This time, he was down after just one night. Hardy says someone came into the store late last night and they donated the last 150 hampers they needed to reach their goal. Since it began, the hamper of Hope campaign has raised more than $200,000 for local food banks. 
It's been a long time coming, but West Lethbridge residents will have another major grocery store to shop in starting tonight. Save on Foods has opened the doors to its new store on Highland Boulevard following an official opening ceremony that began just minutes ago. The store is 41,000 square feet, which is just under half the size of its north side location. But the company says it actually has an expanded range of products to choose from. The store will also carry a large range of ready-made foods and products grown locally or in other parts of Alberta. We're really excited to be here and, and the people have been great. Like, I've had people come up and high-five me and hug me saying thank you for coming to the West. They're really excited for having us over here and, and the, uh, the excitement of people wanting to, to work here too. We've had over 400 people apply to work here and it's been, the response has been fantastic. The store will employ just under 150 employees. A number of local suppliers and producers are putting on food demonstrations until 9.30 tonight. Now this next story is pretty cool. A video featuring staff and students at Raymond High School is going viral. <laughs> The lip dub video was posted on YouTube Monday. It's also making waves on Twitter and YouTube. The idea was dreamed up by University of Lethbridge education student Chris Taylor, who's on his practicum at the Raymond High School right now. It took Taylor three months to plan the video and two hours to shoot it. I was worried at first, uh, I'm not going to lie, but once the second scene was being filmed, the students stepped up, they ripped up all the paper, they got their jerseys. Just kind of went with it, and I, I, was t I was taken back by it. I was really impressed. The students stepped up and kind of just went with the flow, and the staff helped a lot, and it worked out really well. The whole idea behind it was school spirit and bringing the students together. You can watch the full six-minute lip dub video by visiting our Facebook page. You can find us by searching CTV Lethbridge. On the markets today, a down day for the loony and oil. Here are the closing numbers.